Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux Newslog is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for supporting the show and subscribing. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the episode or the stories for this episode, season 18, episode one. Starting off over at linuxgizmos.com, Samsung is debuting its first Tizen phone, the Z1, in India. After much expectation and many false starts, Samsung finally launched the Tizen-based Samsung Z1 smartphone into India's vast and rapidly growing market. Following frequent delays during 2014 and amid growing speculation that the Korean smartphone juggernaut may have been contemplating abandoning Tizen in the face of the growing penetration of emerging markets by low-end Android phones, new rumors surfaced that they would finally be unleashing its first Tizen phone in India in early 2015. Well, apparently uh, that moment has arrived because uh, it is has now been launched in India, so uh, should be pretty interesting. Definitely check it out. If you're in, if you are in India, definitely uh, take a look at it if you are looking for a Linux-based smartphone. From lifehacker.com over in their Australian uh, website at .au, make a handheld Linux terminal with a Raspberry Pi. So this is kind of cool. We've seen pocket-sized Raspberry Pi computers before, but they usually require a 3D printed case. DIY enthusiast Chris Robinson shows you how to build one with off-the-shelf parts. Pretty awesome. Uh, Robinson's build uses a Raspberry Pi A+, a USB hub, battery, touchscreen charger, backlit keyboard, and a few other random parts. The whole thing is housed inside of two plastic hard drive enclosures that are connected with a piano hinge. So pretty cool. Uh, you will need a few extra tools like a drill, soldering iron, wire cutters, etc., etc., but... Uh, according to uh, Lifehacker here, the guide is pretty straightforward. So if you want to do a uh, Raspberry Pi flavored handheld computer, you can certainly do so. From technologytel.com, Chrome Remote Desktop has been released for iOS. A Chrome Remote Desktop app has been released for Google by Google for iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. The app lets people control either their PC, Mac, or Chromebook wirelessly and remotely and it was made available on Android a few months back. So for those of you who are iOS users that want to be able to control your Chromebooks, this is definitely something to look into. From TechCrunch.com, DigitalOcean now supports FreeBSD. That's uh, pretty awesome. I'm a huge fan of FreeBSD. I use it here in my uh, home server. Uh, DigitalOcean, the fast-growing cloud hosting service, today announced that it now supports FreeBSD. This marks the first time the company offers developers the option to run a non-Linux operating system on its servers. And for a first choice of non-Linux operating systems, FreeBSD is pretty hard to, to go wrong with. Uh, from a user's perspective, FreeBSD isn't all that different from a Linux distribution, given that it's also a Unix-like environment. While Linux technically only refers to the operating system's kernel, the FreeBSD project offers a complete operating system. It will take new users some time to get used to FreeBSD, but they will likely find that most of the tools they're used to are also available on FreeBSD. And that's true. It's either there as a direct port or in the form of an equivalent tool that looks, largely looks, acts, and operates like uh, the Linux version. There are some differences, but it's not that big of a difference. Pretty cool. Definitely check it out, especially if you are a DigitalOcean user. From uh, businessetc.com or businessets.com, Goldman Sachs has downgraded Red Hat, Red Hat's stock. Ugh, I hate it when it does that. Red Hat stock traded 3.48% down in pre-market today after Goldman Sachs downgraded the stock from neutral to sell. 
Along with the rating downgrade, Goldman Sachs analyst Heather Bellini gave a price target of $70 compared to a close of $67.44 a day before due to the belief that Red Hat will face an increase in its billing even if there is a constant currency rate. So kind of sucky, but you know, that's business. From Engadget, Firefox makes video chat simpler, launches a marketplace for desktop. This is kind of cool. Looks like Firefox has done beta testing the simpler, no frills version of its hello uh, video chat feature. The latest stable Firefox comes bundled with the updated WebRTC function, which was first released as part of its experimental beta browser in December. First time you've heard of hello, most people would have chosen Skype, Hangouts, or another chat app as their default by now, so we wouldn't be surprised. Hello is an in-browser video chat function that Firefox launched last year, but since it supports WebRTC, it'll work even if your chatmate uses Opera or Chrome instead. Uh, so pretty interesting. Um, should be kind of interesting to see what uh, comes of it. Because as the article points out, there's lots of other options. From uh, lilyputing.com, CompuLab Fitlit, a small fanless AMD Mullins PC for Linux and Windows. Now, we're reporting on this primarily because it's for Linux. It's a tiny little computer that you can use for Linux. So, uh, the CompuLab's la latest tiny fanless desktop computer is powered by a low-power AMD processor, supports up to 8 gigs of RAM, and is designed to run Linux Mint or Windows 7 or later. So, the new Fitlet line of mini-computers mini will be available in February with prices starting at $129 for a bare-bone system. This is fantastic. Um, should be pretty interesting. They've got some pictures of it here. It's got a fair amount of connectivity. Uh, the $129 doesn't include RAM, so you do have to buy RAM for it and storage. But still, nonetheless, to get everything that you need except RAM and storage for $129, granted, it's low and it's not you know a high power system but still pretty cool this is definitely you know entering uh, you know set top box territory for sure so definitely uh, give it a check if you want to uh, roll your own set top box or something of that nature that will do it for this edition of linux news log as always everything we, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes which you can find online over at quicksurf.com Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.